Hello guys. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Tooth drum with the prime. Thank you very much. Let me know how sound is and background sound and all of that. If we're good. Good, good. Great. How are you doing today or tonight, people? Take care, cut. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <clears throat> How are we doing today? New haircut. Not that new, actually. <laughs> Just haven't uh, touched it with my uh, blue bottle. <laughs> but thank you, thank you. So uh, <clears throat> today I was actually trying to um, take a look if we could uh, <clears throat> make a little uh, sneak peek for some final uh, ritual stuff if I can get my client stuff going you snooze I don't snooze <clears throat> no snooze or smoke Sounds remember me of the desert. <clears throat> Indeed, it's actually from uh, Saruka, the desert tree continent. Oh my god, another one. Another one. Gilbert Wombat, thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate it. Nerf humans? Nah, we don't need to nerf them humans. Nerf everything. <clears throat> we all want the Neko patch. It's uh, taken some time to perfect this school, but I think it's worth spending that additional time because <clears throat> it's also not only necromancy in this patch. Um, we have a lot of good fixes, polish, and um, a new location, which is really cool. Um, and quite a few new things for you to uh, explore and experience. So uh, I think it will be worth it for sure. It's gonna be very exciting to see how you uh, experience the new necro location because it's, it's quite something. And I'm actually trying to see, I don't want to reveal too much, so I'm trying to um, get in place to show um, some of the stuff and um, decided to um, show a, a, a very quick sneak peek of um, the ritual system since everyone wanted to see that part as well I thought we may as well show one little ritual <clears throat> So, uh, all right, let's see if we can uh, show you some stuff as well. <clears throat> oh my God, Anuxa, thank another. you for the Prime. Thank you very much. I oh, like you're my favorite Twitch streamer. <laughs> it feels strange because, you know, I don't, I don't uh, see myself as a streamer. But yeah, you know. Once a week for quite a while now, so getting used to how that works at least. <clears throat> uh, let me put on uh, 
my gameplay ambitions as well. Uh, let's see. Do you see this? Don't have sound and everything? A new one. Hello, Daily Hunt Clips. Welcome to the stream. All is there. All right, all right. It's not too pro to start talking about something, showing something, and not really showing it on the stream. It's happened before. <clears throat> so uh, I'm at a new location, as you can see. And like I said, I don't want to spoil it too much. And also, we are still going through polishing phase in this whole area. Um, so there may be issues still. What is this place? Is it a church? Or what the hell is going on in here? Oof. Oof. This looks evil. Evil. <clears throat> Alright, how are you? Thank you for your efforts to you and Starvald. We still love the game. Uh, do you have a solution for player to change the nations in the future? Uh, do you mean the clades? Because you can always be part of or, or rearrange your nation standings. We're gonna dissect every deal, leaf fiber, way sunlight hits the horizon, and know exactly where it's at. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get the clues. But, uh, you know, it's not meant to be a, a very secret place where no one can find it. It's it's a big place, and uh, it's in the lore, and it's been expanded on. So, um, the big secret shouldn't be to find this place. The secret starts when you have found it, or, you know, the work towards exploration and, and secrets. <clears throat> Uh, let's see uh, <clears throat> if we can head out. I wanted to. Um, I'm I'm quite overloaded because I have a lot of stuff on me. To um, I'm not revealing too much, guys. <laughs> I I uh, <clears throat> have quite a lot of stuff on me, and ignore these uh, things in the air, guys. <laughs> Just wanted to take a quick look in here as well. Right, right. Or well, who are these fine gentlemen over here? <laughs> you may wonder. Yeah, we are testing the healing clay the uh, sharing as well. This is a very cool place. I love it. It have a very nice settings and mood and feel to it. The art team have been uh, really cranking it up, creating this place to add as much love as possible. You saw Gandalf, eh? <laughs> I think I saw him too. <clears throat> I was looking at the dark like other stuff. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is uh, you know a, a special place in the world. There there is lore about it. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be awesome when uh, when you get to explore it and look how beautiful this is. Holy shit! I may have messed up. Uh oh. I'm not really set up to fight on this character. <laughs> so I want to avoid a little bit of that. And I don't want to reveal too much either. So let's, let's, let's stay here. And I'm gonna show you some cool stuff. All right, all right. I think we're pretty safe here. <clears throat> No, we haven't started the subscription yet. So there's a certain milestone we want to reach, uh, both in quality, gaming experience, 
and um, a few specific steps. So we actually not enable any subscription until we have that in place. Let's take a look what we have here, guys. <clears throat> look, what is this? What it is? <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, this location is not fully done, and I'm on a certain build, which are which is pretty, which is missing uh, Namesh in this location. So, ignore that for now. But uh, I wanted to show you a little bit what um, you can uh, do with rituals. This is pretty cool. This is a portable ritual table that you will be able to um, master and discover if you are looking for it. Um, so let's place it. So this is a cool, cool table, uh, a normal ritual table, which allows me to um, <clears throat> create my necromancy pets. So every, almost every single creature in the world, you can recreate as a dead minion as your necro pets. <clears throat> Why is the ritual circle name black? This is evil stuff. This is evil stuff. So uh, you don't want to start doing these things in a city. So uh, let let me let me show you how I would raise a dead bear as my necro pets, and that would be the I think the only example I will show today. So let me um, prep the ritual table to have this new user interface as well. <clears throat> So as you can see, here's five component slots that you can use here. Dead beer. <laughs> this is indeed evil stuff, this sheriff. Let's put in this little uh, brown brown beer carcass. So here goes the carcass. And then you have um, three other modifying slots that we're not going to fill around with at this point. But you always need... Um, uh, ritual candle as well, which you place here. Does anyone res recognize this ritual candle? Maybe very hard to catch, but uh, if you have a very sharp eye and you have history from the first game, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> Where's the bug fix patches? So this next patch, as in necromancy, also includes a ton of fixes and polish. And then we are focusing on heavily fixing a lot of things to make sure we are in a very solid state and place before we start adding content again in a new type of structure let me perform this ritual guys just look at the look at the effects and stuff i, I really think it's awesome look at this baby what the hell is happening oh my god awesome awesome so this is my uh, raisin brown beer. Pretty cool, eh? What do you think? So uh, it's meant to um, fade away in a more smooth way when uh, you have created a pet. <clears throat> Indeed, it's very cute, very cute. <laughs> So my uh, raisin brown bear. So that's, that's that's pretty much how you create any creature in the world using those components. Ritual table. Um, you need a carcass. You need a ritual candle, and then there's three additional slots that you will have to explore and play around with to see what kind of impact you can have on your, on your creature. <clears throat> And yeah, we got some uh, tower shields here, actually. 
So we have four types here. Uh, medium, standard, heavy, and large. Uh, we add more action bars when necromancy comes out. We are discussing that as well. Um, so we can get that as solid as possible. Uh, let me take a look on uh, one of these huge shields. <clears throat> so I'm, I think I'm a large character, right? Uh, yes, I'm a very large character. 212. Uh, so these shields um, look quite still large, right? But uh, <clears throat> they're really awesome. But uh, imagine seeing this on a little small Shiva or something. That's 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 gonna be a big one. Uh, but yeah, it it really covers a lot. So it's gonna be interesting to see, uh, you know, this shield formation walking with your three hundred soldier friends. <laughs> gonna be cool. Let me try heavy one. Let me take a look in here. It's a big one. It's a it's a big one. Really cool, right? Artist is doing an amazing job in the materials and details. I think <clears throat> medium. So a little smaller, as you can see. So if you're a small character, maybe this one is more suitable. If you want to have a good visibility, because that's the thing. I I thought I had a... Um, uh, so the standard one size is this one. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if, if I were a small character now and, and, and doing... Uh, this I would have I would have it in my uh, it would be hard to see so there, there's a natural balance here so mm -hmm. if, if I'm a shiver now this line here is covering half the screen or something like that so you have to like go down to see over it so you know if we're going for the realistic route you can we decide that you can go for the biggest shield but uh, you may hindering your visibility severely uh, but if you're a large character then this is not too hindering even though it covers your whole body but you can still see very good <clears throat> uh, like I said uh, I wish I had a elbow in here now so I could show you that you're completely blinded when you hold this one the smallest one is Almost like this one for a small character, so you can see with the smallest one. <clears throat> but yeah, you're gonna have it on the back, I guess. Many mages do, so it looks like this. <clears throat> Your legs <laughs> is uh, looking forward, and obviously it's a heavier shield as well, so it, it has a greater impact on carrying and using it as well. <clears throat> He's also going through polishing testing at the moment. Oh my god, my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Another one. Silava, thank you very much for the sub. <clears throat> so, again, the numbers are not final, but here. You can see the current weight, one kilo. So yeah, no, they're, they're not final. Medium is 2.5 actually. So as you can see, the large one, they haven't got their proper values at this point. Um, obviously, it depends also on what material you put in them. <clears throat> 
Thank you for a good game. Thank you very much. Necromancy soon. Yes, it's our upcoming patch and we're getting closer and closer. We are in polishing states, finalizing the last stuff. So, um, soon. Very soon. <clears throat> yeah, we're looking at that one when you have overdue pets use, which make them lose loyalty over time but or quicker. But yes, we have uh, looked into some of the abuse, using them and then stabling them in a short time period without losing them, getting heavy power. So uh, it's it's one of those uh, balance fixes we're looking at. <clears throat> Here we go again. <sighs> Anik, how are we supposed to know what Carcass plus Jam Artifact equals? Is there a better pet info tab now? <clears throat> no, not really. It's it's gonna be expanded on along with Beastmaster as well, where you unlock the final level of how you use pets. Uh, but that, that won't be in this one. Uh, <clears throat> information about artifacts and gems etc that are used in your ritual table <clears throat> obviously it doesn't say exactly what it does straight on them <clears throat> but um and we do want there to be room for experimenting and and, and testing but we are also expanding <clears throat> information and lore in different ways that should lead players towards different roads of information you know information is power knowledge is power so you can expect along with this patch to see a new way of interacting or getting information from the game in a very interesting creative way that we haven't had before so that will also help giving clues and information and things like that spread out in the world but it heavily starts with this next patch and also quite heavily focused with this area that we are adding. <clears throat> so yeah, it can be everything from notes to books, stuff like that, hidden and openly in different ways that you actually access and can open and read. So it's really cool. <clears throat> Oh my god, I'm not a one. I'm not Thank you for the subscription. Uncle Sid. Dithan gonna come in as well. Yes, yes, it is. Oh so we have all one. spells finished for necromancy now. <clears throat> um, really cool stuff. Um, Death hand, a very popular spell for sure. I wonder if this is enabled on my <clears throat> ritual pet yet. It is, it is. I'm linking into his brain, tapping right into it. So now I am back bound with my bear, which is pretty awesome, pretty awesome. You see here's a little buff timer with the information as well. You're connected to a pet and part of the damage you take will be taken by the pet instead. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, 
making me a little bit more tanky as a necro mage. <clears throat> uh, this is an amazing update, guys. Do you see this? Remember when uh, you have to, when it's especially a new school, when you don't recognize the icons, you have to go in here to read about them, know which one, what the hell one was this one over here. And now it says sacrificial heal. Almost forgot about that quality of life improvements. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, does this one work on them? Let's see. No, this one is for um, the walkers only. <clears throat> yeah, small things like this is very helpful, especially like I said, a new school with a lot of new icons, and since they are color coded per school. It may be a, you know, a trick at first to re learn which one was now which one when they have the same color code. Um, so that that's very helpful to finally be able to read what you put on the hotbar. <clears throat> Glad Midsommar. Happy Midsommar. How do you celebrate Midsommar? Do you do it like the sweets, you know, and go to those... <laughs> places and uh, sacrifice <laughs> someone <clears throat> have you seen that movie we need hot more hot bars indeed we are uh, looking into that mm. yo 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 Henrik glad me so much looking sick could you do me a fat progress and start the giveaway? Gotta go bed soon. <laughs> we'll hate to miss it. I will uh, start the giveaway in just a brief minute. I uh, can do it early, yes. Can you show us the last spell that didn't work last time? Mute cast. Uh, so mute is for um, auto players, right? Uh, or wait, did I? Didn't even put it in. Um, I'm not sure if I have it here still yet. No, no, it's not in yet. Um, so that's a new spell and quite unique. Um, it actually disables your VoIP <laughs> and also taps into your Beast Mastery controls where you do special commands to your pets or creatures. And with mute on, you won't be able to perform those commands. So it's a, you know, highly tactical spell if you're facing a threat that you can kind of cripple down on with that spell. But no, it's it's not in in this build yet. Yes, there are there are undead spiders as well. <laughs> Pretty much all of them. Uh, a creature you can kill and bring the carcass you can raise again as your minion. Indeed, when you get muted you can't talk on uh, in the VoIP. <laughs> so pretty, uh, pretty cool spell, if you ask me. <laughs> so if there's someone annoying, annoyingly loud, you can mute him. Zap, zap his mouth. Um, and yeah, you've seen me uh, playing around with the spells before, right? Very epic spells. It's cool. Yeah, so we're looking at obviously when you are performing legal actions or where where it is a negative impact on another player, then it's also tied to a criminal action. So um, obviously, you need to be careful casting these these spells in cities in front of guards, etc. How does that 
of search spell work is it aoa spell or uh or a single target spell like man apart like no it's uh, actually a way so if there's a line of people here you can damage them all if you if you do uh, release the hits when they are lined up for that effect to happen mm. you need to do your sounds when you cast Eric. <laughs> i went uh too excited when i was showcasing it the first time now i've casted a uh, quite a amount and calm down <laughs> Kaboom. boom <clears throat> yeah you don't need uh, taming or domination when you're raising a dead pet it's completely unrelated to um, how you take control uh, um, over those creatures. So, <clears throat> so this is pretty much. It's not a bear actually here. I mean, it is a bear, but it's a dead bear, right? That you put together and raise again, and it listens to your commands. So <clears throat> you won't be able to trade this, um, and of course. If a guard see this little lady bear walking into the cities, they're gonna whack it. So um, they won't allow uh, undead creatures in cities, even though it's blue here. <clears throat> it's bear, it's bear indeed. Indeed. The bear. <laughs> Mana drain. Uh, where the hell do I have? Do I have it? <laughs> Mental leech. Mental leech. Zoom. Zoom. It's the sound of that one, if you didn't know that. And uh, then we can uh, tap into uh, his health. <laughs> Holy! Ah! That that he didn't like that. Okay, his brain connected that I'm taking his life. He don't like it. All right, you don't like it. Come down, come down. So you have to you have to be um, careful. Okay. I thought there was mana drain for having a pet out. No, so this is a um, ritual pet. That's different from the summoning pets that I showed in previous streams. So you're not losing um, mana when you have a ritual pet. Uh, however, if you do have another pet now, uh, a normal pet alive, this bear will... Um, feel a too strong urge to start eating that pet. So uh, you can't mix mix the dead with the living. <clears throat> yeah, we're going through the... Uh, no. Oh! Um, the balancing uh, in terms of all of this currently. Uh, no, we still haven't added uh, the specific house in Namesh, so we're looking into uh, that as well. This is the Henry guy, indeed, indeed. <laughs> oh, oh. <clears throat> What's to stop people from gating the higher tier Necro Altars? What do you mean by that?
You mean a, a guild trying to control a hotspot? Is that pretty much what you mean? We be camped and grieved all day. You mean uh, the hotspots in the world? <laughs> That's what hotspots is, right? Change the sound that undead creature make. Like a necromantic cult protecting ancient teachings. I mean that that's up to the players, right? <clears throat> we can't really decide who should go here and who cannot. That's up to the players. That's the free dynamics of a true sandbox game. Uh, <clears throat> but obviously we have this in mind when we place things in the world also when it comes to getting different types of access to magic and different types of powers, right? Uh, but yeah, there, there will also naturally be things in the world that are unique to certain uh, places, like the Blast Furnace and other things like that. So that is obviously a natural location to fight, to control for, or sneak in, or use diplomacy, peace, trading, between each other to get access. That's that's part of the game, right? Ships next patch. No, not ships next patch. <clears throat> so next patch is the big necro necromancy patch, which includes a lot of bug fixes and polish, but also quite quite a few things. Uh, we get you know the whole necromancy school, a whole new location to uh, explore and. Um, learn over time um, <clears throat> getting the tower shields and there's a few other cool things that you will um, encounter sooner or later and after necro we have a <clears throat> full focus uh, at some core issues uh, you know, we are working on to solve invisible weapons, the different heights, uh, oops, different heights uh, in houses, keeps, strongholds. Quite annoying to see someone running in the air, someone running in the ground. So we have a, a, a huge focus on just polishing and bug fixing. So Hopefully, getting rid of those big nasty ones once and for all. Um, we have some item issues in houses that we've also been working on as of late. You noticed one of the patch, server side patch, just a few days ago. Um, but yeah, we really want to make sure we secure all players' assets, resources, items, and uh, pets also. We know there are several locations where pets are an annoyance when following. Uh, we, uh, we have identified an issue where when someone builds a house in the world, it also messes up the damage how a pet, pet path navigates around those houses. So you may have seen that where it looks like it should just follow you next to a house, it refuses. Some annoying stuff like that, we really need to get under control before we... Uh, adding more content moving forward. And then we're also stepping over to Unreal 5. We are going deeper and deeper into that new chapter because it also helps us greatly in several areas for the game to improving it also. So, uh, you know, it's going to be exciting to show you the step from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5 for Mortal Online. Uh, so that's also one of the big step forward. That will help the game also. <clears throat> so no, not only Necro stuff in this patch. Uh, Lady Love Lux. Like I said, uh, quite a lot of polish and bug fixing. 
uh, and, and a few other things also. Uh, all of these pads going to be a uh, one button press for win mechanic steel. No, no. We talked about this a few times. So one of the big changes with pets that comes with Beast Mastery, one of our upcoming patches also, there's going to be quite the change in addition to pet control, how you use your pets. Um, and that is exactly the reason. So we always promote the game to be player skills. Uh, your character build shouldn't just be heavily, you know, if you invest it in pets, that is your assets, right? Using pets uh, as your weapons, which means we want to make sure that you rely on your player skills and knowledge rather than just clicking one attack button and run away. So doing that will make your pets being gimped. <clears throat> so the key here is to every family species will have certain special attacks <clears throat> and your beast master skill will also unlock stronger attacks but also allow you you have to uh, perform those attacks in the right circumstances to you know make full use of your pets and if you fail in those steps there there's a cooldown as well which again you know gimps your pets so we're promoting exciting and fun challenging player skills with pets now for the first time ever which we are really looking forward to you know forward to to promote that part of the skillful set gameplay as well <clears throat> so pretty much if you do nothing and play poorly as a beast master you're just gonna do the small common attacks but nothing more pretty much so yeah we really hope that it will be much more fun and exciting as well to really master this field just like any other thing you know like melee fighting mage fighting and now beast beast master fighting <clears throat> yeah we're looking into those issues as well with pets inside strongholds etc what's the book in your inventory where can we find the lore of this place so there will be lore spread out like i mentioned in several places in the world some things will be tied to this location and what's going on here and but it's also been expanded on um, the background history of Nave, which is going to be exciting as well to have that growing finally after so many years uh, being in integrated in the game. So uh, Mats have, as as you may know, he have worked quite a lot in creating the backbone of what is this, what kind of wor world is this, what universe is it, what happened here, what's going on. Really cool deep lore uh back background story and now we also have a right hand writer that is also very skilled in this field and is very excited and motivated for this so that's awesome to see that going uh, well together so we can you know take the step in adding a lot more of that because it's not only i mean there there's always players that don't care about lore and history right uh, and there are those players that would love to have that but also another important thing is that um you know it's a way to actually get information and clues and riddles and tasks mission like and also knowledge that may give you an opportunity that is rare or unique so it's a cool way to blend information and lore in a way where you can actually gain access and knowledge which is powers right how the hell do I resolve this? Or how the hell do I obtain this power or learn this and that? Th that is a very good way to incorporate those functions as well with lore and information. So I, I really like that whole picture getting in into the game as well. It's going to be important for many different reasons. And yeah, it, it is, of course, a MMORPG after all. That is, that is very correct. It's easy to forget that this is an MMORPG game. True Sandbox uh, MMORPG game. And not only a deathmatch game or you know battle online game that's that's just one small portion of what this game will offer especially more and more over the years uh, in different areas can trash if my beast master is a hunter will all uh, pet attacks be unlocked or on any level pet or only oh, on high level I'm pets <clears throat> so yeah beast master have those two 
um, component. They unlock the, the higher powerful attacks a pet can have and allows you to use their special attacks as well. And, and like I said, it won't use those attacks until you perform the action for them. And this is where you can understand where the mute spell also comes into play. Uh, you can mute him so he can't perform these commands to his pets. So it's, it's really cool a really cool connection and how the player can counter and interact in that type of way. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, so currently we have Beastmaster as the key skill to give plane. certain commands. Um, and as of right now, it's the same for all pets. Either if you are a Tamer or do Dominator or Necro and also in the future others. It could be that they are moved over to uh, a more rightfully skill bound to those, depending on also heavily on, on, on the balance. Because as you can see, the more ways of tapping into different creatures uh, there may be some splits that make sense seems like a nerf to beastmasters no it's it's not a nerf because you never had these attacks which would be a game game changer for using pets so like i said it's supposed to be like shit you really use that move flawlessly and it you know gave you that victory or changed the outcome in a way just like any other battle that, holy shit, you heal just in time to save his ass from dying and, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, we're getting highly tactical spells now with necromancy that can uh, have an impact on large scale battles. So <clears throat> I would not say it's a nerf because we never had a special race family attacks in any animal ever in mortal history. Now we're adding those along with your control in utilizing them. So it's actually, I would say, a buff if you are a master at Beastmaster and you use it correctly. But if you misplay, it's, it's going to punish you, your pets. Uh, so it's going to make skillful Beastmasters stand out from not so skillful. Um, and like I said, being passive, it, it will do um, the normal weak attacks. So I, I think it makes sense in terms of balance and like we're always trying to promote the game to be which is player skills should be a key component at all times knowledge and player skills and it's gonna be super fun because you now we can also all of a sudden you know no one is using wolves because they're not good enough all of a sudden you may want to use wolves because they can do a certain attack uh, that's other creatures cannot. <clears throat> All of a sudden you may want to use the Kogars because you can enable them, you can shout to them to sprint and jump which which they can do in a small window and that, that could be a devastating hit and run attack, you know, utilizing that speed on a very short burst things like that, so um, it's going to be fun and exciting to make use of all animals even though they're maybe super weak there could be a use of some of them Game turning into Pokemon. No, holy shit, no search. Completely no. Completely no. You know, power and player skills will always be king here, right? And uh, a tight, small group, mages, melee fighters, they will always be at a backbone of a battle. Always has been and always will be. Now we're just getting more and more tools, variation, options that caters for different play styles and can, uh, you know, as a group, become even more exciting and successful in different ways. That's that's what the game is all about. It's a sandbox MMO RPG again. Yeah, along with Beastmaster, obviously we're focusing on polishing and overall on pathing and AI. Uh, and we're looking to add those commands as well so you can have better control of your pet if it should defend himself being passive or 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 not. Mm. 
a lot more cosmetics to really make my character unique. Yeah, that's that's um, something that will grow over time for sure. <clears throat> so both in terms of more clothing and gear, everything from light to heavy, uh, to more of um, we have more of these. Um, um, decoration slot that can also be used for different things also not only capes i mean you've seen the samurai flag banner there will be more type types of that also uh, but yeah for sure over time you will have a lot more to choose from you will see beast mastery on the upcoming update roadmaps we won't have date on them but you will see them in what order you are we are looking at implementing the different steps into the game so now you don't even need to protect your pet he'll just guard himself more skill based combat nice Indeed, just like in real life, if you hit a dog in the head and it's deadly trained, it may bite you. Makes sense, right? You as pet owner will give those commands. Yeah, it's, it's primary uh, points for necromancy, uh, animal magnetism, and also the work knowledge if you want to use the summoning part of necromancy. Show me trinkets. Those are some crappy trinkets. <laughs> Half crappy. Not nothing to uh, care about. Beast mage. What do I mean with beast mage? Get of beast mastery. Uh, no eight at this time. Like I mentioned, when we update the roadmap, you will see it in one of those upcoming patches. Uh, and we we won't have date on those because yeah it's just just stressful uh, and and trying to squeeze in meeting the deadlines and it could be at the cost at you know polish which we don't want to have at this stage from now on we are heavily focused on polishing and bug fixing and then moving forward implementing new features and content will be uh, done in a certain way to make sure we have better control um, and stability yeah we're looking to add a command that you can tell your pet to be passive or defend himself uh, if something attacks uh, let, let's let's do the giveaway I promised to do it early on and it's already getting slowly late so let let me set that up as well guys one moment uh, so let's start the giveaway guys to participate explanation mark m02 let's do it guys it's up so um, type explanation mark m02 to participate and we can uh, take some questions while you fill up the pool <clears throat> uh... One moment, guys, I'm just gonna was I doing um, there's something important I didn't want to forget about uh, right 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 um, you want to see one more ritual there may be some guys missed it I could do a 
terror bird this time. They want to see a terror bird. Uh, undead terror bird. What do you say, guys? Terrorbird, all right. Let's 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 take a look at this little baby then. Now uh, let's place a little uh, ritual table here, guys. Boom and boom. What a beauty! What a beauty! Special for order. <laughs> Special for order. <clears throat> I, I ready to crank crank up the 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 the. the, the, the did I? Did I? Not? Yes, I did. Shall we do it, guys? Shall we do it? Let's do it then. A terror bird and a ritual candle perform. No. <laughs> Did I miss something here? I wasn't sure if that one worked. <laughs> Aura is trash. <laughs> yes. I'm checking if I'm, if I'm missing something. But I thought it wouldn't. Hmm. Sorry, guys, no go. <laughs> no go. Yeah, this this build doesn't have all the animals in it. So, um... Ooh. what the hell? Okay, we 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 got a, we got a, got one over here at least, but uh, we couldn't summon summon him at these points. Let's throw it away so I can move. Yeah, we got a uh, got one here at least. He's angry. He's angry. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Dangerous as hell. Pretty cool, eh? So, uh, as you can see, all creatures have been transformed into a dead version. That's chicken ever. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. And I really love the effect of the ritual. It's really cool how it starts growing in these lines. And then, boom, comes the creature. And, uh, yeah, can't wait until you guys show us summoning one of the first undead troll, for instance. That That's going to be a sight. Or even a minotaur, guys. Why not? Why not? Uh, yeah, troll, troll. So every creature, pretty much, uh, you can get back uh, as a undead pet. Pero pere, pero laran. How's it going, man? Oh, 
location is that? So this is uh, one of the new location coming in the Necro Patch, where you will be able to learn a lot about necromancy. So yeah, if anyone uh, just came in, explanation mark MO2 to uh, join the giveaway. I will uh, pull it in just... Oh, look at that. Look at that. And we got a little undead rabbit. Look at this little... <laughs> cutesy. Cutesy. An undead rabbit. Raisin rabbit. Ooh. Uh, if I can raise a player, <clears throat> so we should have a uh, humanoid version. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't confirmed. But why not, right? Anything that you can get carcass from should be raceable. Does it have a special attack? The little rabbit. <laughs> Maybe uh, this can become the Monty Python rabbit, you know? That, that jumping, flying, crazy rabbit. <laughs> Looks quite nasty. <clears throat> hey -ya. Hey -ya. Pick a boom. Oh, poor little bastard. Poor little bastard. Yes. Uh, this will also be uh, adjusted. Uh, obviously it's a half damaged killed creature. So there will be um, adjustment in that. So we just got all creatures in, in the undead version. We are tweaking and balancing the stats. And uh, obviously also making sure it loots. Yeah, exactly. Is covered. Yeah, no, no, you can ignore that. Um, obviously that will not be um, a full loot carcass. Balance, balance. <clears throat> yeah, and the cost for creating the creature, uh, you, will, you will see how that works as well. <clears throat> so obviously, if you're trying to raise a troll, you will need a amount of carcass to raise a troll or it won't become a troll because you only have a few parts uh, so you won't be able to produce more obviously uh, or create a creature with less of the one you're trying to create it's balance part that's one of the things we are working on here. And yeah, you know, it's... <clears throat> no, so we are looking at um, making sure that... So a, a, a troll carcass obviously has multiple stacks. I don't remember how many it is. But it will allow you to add the right amount to make sure that... Uh, you can raise a troll. So you can't put in one troll carcass and raise a troll. Then obviously you only need one stack of carcass to produce thousands of trolls over time. So that's that's not gonna work. Are we ready for the giveaway? 
Anyone tune in? Explanation mark M2 to um, have a shot. <clears throat> one guess uh, uh. Richard in M are very impressive. This person looks meh. So we didn't have this in the first game, so I don't know uh, what you're referring to. I mean if you're referring to how you created a two black. This is not a two-black ritual. So we didn't have the ritual uh, table that allows you to raise anything dead, which is insane. That was a dream in the first game. We couldn't. Now it happens. So all the creatures in the world you can raise again, which is really cool. And then there are certain types of ritual tables. I'm not showing them right now. That's how you can create certain types of necromancy pets. For instance, a two-black. And no, I can't raise that to black here now. No, the dead doesn't eat. It's a, yes, a dev spell book. So, um, only for me. Uh, if you make a certain to black, it has a range. There are also a few other creatures. We have a water lizard coming in, which also can spit. We have spiders that have range. So th there's a few ones you can build. Uh, okay, one minute and I'm gonna pull the giveaway. Explanation mark Emma 2 and one minute and I running it. <clears throat> the news on a uh, UF5 integration. You expect great benefit from it or will it be a less noticeable? Uh, yes, we are progressing slowly but steady and it's part of one of our uh, important milestones. Um, that we're working towards and yes we are more and more impressed by that upgrade of engine and there are for sure areas that we can uh, utilize a lot of good things for mortal online specifically uh, nanites gonna be a great addition to really push the graphical details to an insane range that never been possible before in Unreal Engine uh, and better and better news with Lumen system we are finding ways to utilize Lumens to make the game look like real life next gen lightning shadows but still remaining in, in um, with solid performance which is the key so slowly but steady Seem that looks to be the case. You will get 500 FPS. Tick kick 94. <laughs> no, no. You won't you won't get such boost, especially when we are utilizing uh, the new systems like like Lumens. There is a cost with Lumens, no doubt. And that's that cost is something we're working hard on minimizing as much as possible. Like naming uh, is on the list. I can't say where that goes in at this point. Like named AFs are support for video cards. Um, like I said before, we won't actively, you know, engage with them to try to get AMD support in the engine. But you know, it's in their interest to make sure that Epic Games Unreal Engine have access to that easily and implement it in such support in the engine so we you easily can uh, make use of it what the hell we got a we got a new type of chicken 
No, it's that type. Yep, the undead chicken. <laughs> um, six out of nine nights and Lumens. We both be utilizing the game. Yes, Arcane Trauma. They will. As it looks right now, we will use both Lumens and Nanites. And the game will look insane. It will go from the probably best looking MMORPG so far in the market to even further. It goes straight to real life. <laughs> Thanks to the power of those new techs. Yes, when I summon uh, pets from this ritual table, I'm under control when it's summoned. Let me do the giveaway then, guys. Until it gets too late. Um, so here goes. Uh, what do I have? Hmm. Yeah, let, let me switch over to this one so I can pull it. All right. Good luck, everyone. Here goes the giveaway. Let me just pause that and um, here goes. Boom! Everyone, <laughs> drink water, you thirsty yo. I have no water today. Damn, I missed it. But all right, here goes the giveaway, guys. Good luck, everyone. Uh, it's time. Oh my god, another one. Another one. Good luck, everyone. Arika Royce, thank you very much for the subscription. All right, here goes. Who is it this time? It is the Battle Bandits. Congratulations. Congratulations. The Battle Bandits. Let me hear you say yo in uh, a DM. Carney wins again. The Battle Bandits. Um... What the hell is my chat? Here. The Battle Bandits, congratulations. Are you here, my son? <laughs> Your version with Unreal 5. Yeah. Uh, we will support VR rendering uh, sometime after we implement the stepping over to Unreal 5. There's a few steps we need to do to make sure the game display user interface properly uh, and all effects display correctly. But yeah, that, that will be um, one of the steps after we have implement Unreal 5. I'm not sure exactly when that will happen though, but there's a good support in the engine so we can take that step more naturally. Uh, let's see if I can. There you are. All right. Let me get you a key. And we are done with that giveaway for today. Oh my, oh my God. God. Another, one. Another, one. Another one. The evil gentleman. Thank you very much. Congrats, the Battle Bandits. Congrats. As always, veteran or new player or semi. What say you, the Battle Bandits? An Expor. It's a very dangerous spell to freeze a player. You know, that type of controllers. We're always very careful when we add such mechanics. There should always be a robust counter and, you know, possibility and options for sure, if if we do so. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> I 
Battle Bandit, are you are you a veteran or new to the game? Or somewhat new? I wanna know. And we're on the Mount of Archer Wobble. Uh no update since last time. It is on the list. It will be added. It's not a quick thing, as you can imagine, or it would have been in in there. Uh, but it's it's planned in our upcoming Polish sessions. No, no. Nazi war. So, like I said, this the polishing starts now with the necromancy going in the next patch and then we have a full focus on uh, coming patches that are just polishing quality of life improving things uh, and adding a few systems to give us full control over everything um, before we're heading back to more big new content looks like it took the king ran did he? I don't know. Is there facial recognition from our cameras to our character to make the face and mouth move? Yes. So, uh, I've shown you a little bit of this. I don't know if you guys in here have seen when I was streaming as a Thursar. Uh, our in-game model Thursar, which was quite awesome and the impression how it captured my facial impressions is quite impressive even in that early state um, <clears throat> and we plan to add that as an option for players as well and we will also use it for whenever you're talking your character is also talking so that also helps to identify when you're talking right you see the mouth is moving I haven't seen it can we see it again I had to set it up and I haven't set that up for quite a while and um, it takes a while so I have to prepare that then but maybe I can do that in an upcoming stream down the road uh, to show you guys because yeah it's really cool um, I think it's I think it's on YouTube possible uh, but yeah instead of seeing my face here in the button left you see me as a Thursar talking and it, it does follow my head movement and expression quite well quite deeply what happened to the rp games tavern games they're still in the makings and on the upcoming roadmaps so we haven't forgot about that for sure it's an important component because like we said before after all it's a rpg game right we need those elements and that will also just add more casual socializing interesting components to play with your friends or you know against them making money or losing money that that's that's all all part of the social gameplay part in mortal in-game money i have to clarify i think you should should be a cute villa not the thursar <laughs> I guess that can be uh, done later. God gamer, the all knowing wise. There, there's a few. There's a few of those out there. I would love to play your game. It must be the best in the world, right? Was writing. Well, the pets is in are the pets gonna be able to attack while being ridden we are planning to give you again as a beast master options to give commands on your pet as well um, we are slowly expanding into the new and other pets over time like i mentioned we have a bottleneck in terms of animation manpower there which we're still trying to expand on that will help us take those steps faster in the future Uh, I mentioned last week you were going to add a new roadmap. We're excited to see what we get next. Yeah, uh, we will update the roadmap soon. We haven't delivered the last one yet. We are getting close to that though. So yeah, we plan to update that shortly after sometime.
Why are you thinking about Tyrant game before TC? Why implement the same Necro Pass that destroyed M1? I guess you have missed all the conversation regarding this because it sounds like you don't know, right? Uh, we talked about this in several streams, what we are refining and how we are rebuilding things, which part didn't work in the first game. We learned from that and rebuilding those systems to make sure it works in Mothlain 2. So we're not making the same mistakes in implementing something bad half working or simply wasn't fun or balanced in the long run or just gave us all a lot of headache both players and the staff so that's why we're not making those mistakes again and uh, doing it highly improved this time around Why are all pets magic? All the pets magic base? What? All the skills do, to do with pets are aided by intelligent psych as a ra ranch hand in trained and managed many animals types without any degree. I need strength and reaction time. <clears throat> Grab your blue bottle. I should have it. I uh, forgot about it. Anuxa. <laughs> One of the few stream I forgot about it. Yes, guards kills your necropets. They don't allow those beasts entering the town. When Necro drops, will you resume other flies to bring pop up? So, uh, th this is a challenge, right? So, obviously, we want there's a few issues, bugs that we will really want to fix before we again invite people back, reach out to more players and influencers, streamers, etc. Because it would be annoying if they experience those bugs again that already annoy them. And also, obviously, Giving, giving publicity that we're still suffering from those bugs would be bad, right? At the same time, obviously, we want to make sure that more and more players can find the game and getting into the game. Um, so you see, it's, it's a two-edged side here. So we're really trying to do our best in fixing those bugs that we know. Sooner or later, everyone going to run into them and be annoyed. Uh, stuff like that. We really want to have fixed so we're already doing a lot of polish and fixing in this patch uh, necra is this patch is uh you know it's a really solid patch with, with very good mage gameplay that a lot of our players new and old have been waiting for and asking for for a very long time now so obviously that is a natural exciting part of jumping back in mortal playing around with these new fields both gameplay wise but also as a mage but also the errors we're adding is really cool that anyone can enjoy in different ways um, <clears throat> so I would say that there's a very important milestone ahead after um, Necro where we are heavily focusing on some of these issues I just uh, described uh, that we haven't managed to fix yet <clears throat> but we are working on them and making progression so with those fixed and the capacity increased even further than we are today. Um, we plan to reinitiate the marketing campaign uh, with all those steps that we had going when we released the game, but we had to put on hold and pause. Um, and there's a lot on that plate. And uh, a lot of players, influencers and streamers that are waiting on that milestone, because that's also when we know it will um, be beneficial for whenever any new player joins in they will get a much more polished and better performance or experience overall we're also focusing on that starting experience we have identified some of the 
fallouts, gaps from Haven to Mirland and making sure that we give as good chance as possible to any new player joining the game because that's something we all need and want, right? Uh, growing healthy player population base, uh, the more the more exciting and fun the game will be for everyone, even though everyone have different play styles and interest in different types in the game. Uh, so while we're slowly ramping things up, making aware of the game and explaining these steps and important milestones uh, obviously it's gonna be the big guns running uh, with these big milestones and that's part of the epic games release so we release on on that new platform along with these very important upgrades uh, to the game and improvement and polish that's when we really crush it um, and we'll start again with with those plans and steps that we are prepared for release oh my god Another strife tech tv thank you for donation are you guys actively working on fixing the crazy inventory issues also the items limits are either way too small or broken for keeps and even houses yes we are that's one of them uh, housing items is one of those big very annoying bad bugs so we have a lot of invisible items in our player base currently using the houses and chests. The good news is they are not lost, but they are invisible. So you can't access them. So yes, that is one of the things we are working to fix and make sure it's solid. Uh, and I plan to add soulbound cosmetic items, clothing with serious stats that you can find in game. <clears throat> so we have the decoration slot, right? The capes, you can't lose those, which is no bonus at all to your character. It's, it's more your visual styles. And we will have a lot more of those and different types for sure. Uh, the um, the the house height differences is being worked on, and uh, hopefully we will have that solved. Hopefully already for this coming necro patch, but if it doesn't make it for that one, uh, it will be for sure in the upcoming polishing focus patches. Can you please make VoIP louder so we can actually hear peeps? Ronin sits. It depends 100% on the users. You may have noticed some are, yes, very uh, silent, but some are crazily, crazy loud. Um, this is quite tricky because it depends so much on the users, depending on their system, their headset, the mic, uh, their input, outputs. All of that makes, makes a difference, right? Um, but yeah, you know, any, any control volume we may add to options help you to, you know, tweak that. But like I said, if someone's output is super low, you know, it doesn't matter how much you crank it up. If it's still low, it's going to be low until you tell them, put your freaking mic close to your mouth and crank it up. Um, so it's, it's, it's tricky. Yeah, because if you only have a slider for the, the inbound, then obviously the silent one gonna be a little bit louder if you crank it up, but obviously the loud one gonna be crazy loud. <laughs> you try. We are working on that, and the houses is being worked on right now. Hopefully, we'll be fixed for this coming patch, the necro. If not, one of the upcoming after. 
Not a better VoIP codec. The current one quality is lacking, in my opinion. Uh, but I'm kind of audiophile, so it doesn't bother me. It's actually pretty high quality if we compare to many others. We started even worse because, you know, when thousands of players are connecting to this server, we built our own in house VoIP system and it's quite impressive. There's nothing like it. There are companies that are selling their services as a VoIP for, for games and many are using them and they pay a fee for using them and it's a complete solid VoIP system. But when we looked into their limitations, there's only X amount of players that can hear at the same time. Only this many can connect at the same time. It didn't fit our world at all. So we built our own and it's the best one I've seen so far. There's no limitation because we built it with this scale in mind. So thousands of players are connecting to this and it works really, really well. We never had any problems since that was polished in its late, later states. Um, and yeah, we, we have that ability to uh, choose quality range but obviously it comes at the bandwidth cost right and we want to make sure that since all of the players are connected to our VoIP server we want to make sure that we don't steal too much bandwidth from from your gameplay bandwidth and of course we need to make sure that we can handle the capacity when x amount is connected and using at the same time but there is room for tweaking it uh, a little bit but I, I think the quality is pretty solid again compared to most other VoIP games. And yeah, it should be better on Discord. Um, in terms of MMOs, it's definitely good enough. Didn't uh, didn't really take that in mind. Yeah, and like I said, it it straight goes down also to the bandwidth. Um, you know, it can quickly go higher. And since everyone have different types of internet bandwidth limitations. We don't wanna want that to take too much as it could interfere with the gameplay if they are maxing out their bandwidth. This weapon swapping getting some work. Uh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we we agree that it's a little clunky. Um and it needs to be more fluid. Uh so yeah, there will be polish on that uh, again in our upcoming polishing patches. Notice by dropping along with PvP nerfs. What do you mean with PvP nerfs? We haven't even touched the PvP. <laughs> we haven't had time to touch the PvP at all since there haven't been a critical state and also since we need to um, work on the bugs and the issues that affects everyone even before you get into any pvp at all right we don't get those cool bookshops in abandoned monastery for our houses uh, in any upcoming patches we add more and more decorations and drops rares collectibles that you can use and find and put in your house or trade. Is it possible to fish up a ring? So I have a clarification with that. I finally got some word about it. There was something making them extremely, extremely rare in fishing, if I understood it correctly. Uh, and we have fixed that extreme case in this next patch, so it will be more as it should in terms of drop rates. So you want us to remove all the priests outside the dungeons. That's one of the widely opinion I heard lately. <clears throat> yes, yes, no. I think most people can get behind that one.
Yeah, Afshin, as I mentioned, there's a case where catching a ring is extreme compared to amulet, and that extreme factor will is fixed in this uh, next patch, so they will drop as a more normal rate. What is this? Is this a undead horsey? It is, it is. Look at this baby. Look at this baby. Oh! Oh! Poor horsey. He's missing some skin here. Oh! What's in here, guys? What's in here? Oh. Oh. A rice chicken. Oh. 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 What is this, guys? What is this? What is this place? Oof! I'm not sure if we dare to go down here, guys. I'm not sure. That are freaking uh, undead piggy. This got a undead piggy rising. Get it too strong. Get out of here. Get out of here with your jaunts and annoyances. <laughs> that's that's all you can do, right? Oh wait. Oh wait. Come on, man. I shouldn't go. I shouldn't go any further, guys. Shouldn't go any further. Nah. Shouldn't. 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 They do path here. They do path here. Shouldn't, shouldn't go any further. Shouldn't. You know? Shouldn't. <laughs> shouldn't. Oof. There's a long way down, guys. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go down here. Nah. Nah. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Mr. Pinkly. Prinkly. Yeah. This this is as far as I dare to go, guys. This is as far as I oh, that's it. That's it guys. Sorry. That that that's that's as far as I dare. Too scared. Too scared, guys. That journey. You will have to pick up. Right? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, our guys have spent a lot of time in this place to make it spectacular, epic, and there is... Um, completely new type of gameplay bound to this location so it's gonna be really fun to um, hear what you think about that type of experience it's gonna be awesome
It's going to be awesome. Too much of a choke point. You will see. You will see. Look how close to this ritual table is with the candles. Nice light. It's a cozy scene. <clears throat> I thought a few more hidden chests in the world. Uh, there are coming more and more, including interest points and even more. Any official release date for Necromancer class? Uh, no official date, other than that we are getting very close uh, to deliver this patch. We are doing balancing and polishing, and then we will um, release it. Bop, bop, bop. So, um, it's cozy, then a zombie comes up and eats you. Nope. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Look at these, uh, scary statues. Something isn't right over here. Something isn't right. What is that? A book? Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. A rice and satyr. So this is an undead satyr, guys, that you can also rise and use as your pets. Pretty cool. Look at him! He is dead. So cool. So cool. Uh, those sounds. <laughs> Aim! Snake are gonna be OP like MO1? No. Have you heard nothing? Please, come on. How many how many times do I have to go over the 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 balance discussions that we learned from the first game? So obviously we are making use of that knowledge and data since the first game. So the creatures for instance Imagine a, a, a troll, if you kill that and raise it as a undead pet. Obviously, it's not the living troll stats. That that will be quite nuts, and it also doesn't make sense since it's damaged and, and, and dead. And it doesn't have the brain and spirit as it did when it was alive. So it's, it's dumbed down, it's half damaged and falling apart, and you use it with magic. To, so that's kind of the balance factor and explanation of why it's not as powerful also. And since we need balance, right? Uh, yes, I learned, Kelly, and I also learned your attitude <laughs> in here over the months. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so, no, and like I said, it's not until we get to Beast Mastery that you can unlock and have the special attack commands and control uh, which forces player skills on you. So without using player skills and reading the opportunity and doing things right, there's a cooldown and um, your pet is gimped. And that wasn't the case in the first game. In the first game there was indeed very powerful pets and it was quite easy mode where you can say attack and then step back and wait. That's something we wanted to improve and handle this time around so right now all of the creatures are somewhat weaker because they are lacking their special attacks and commands due to beast mastery and along with beast mastery the balance factor comes into play where you are in control of how effective your pet will be or not how about some content for small guilds this patch is packed with it packed packed with it Mm 
worked hard to create those old part pets footwork. Did you hear nothing that I just said and explained? In one ear and out in the other one. I just explain why they're not overpowered as they were in the first game and how we are work, working towards those goals that we didn't succeed in the first game. Does it make sense what I'm saying or uh, it's, it's not clear? <clears throat> Hello, comes this game to consoles. At this point, we are not porting it to consoles. Uh, it is doable to port it eventually. Um, and that's something we have to evaluate down the line. Uh, there, there's been companies reaching out in different forms. I can, I can say that. Um, so we are obviously looking into our future options. I was saying it did work hard in Model 1 on those pets. I did work hard on in Model 1 on those pets. Alright, alright, good work. I mean, like I said, you can still be greatly rewarded being a successful Beastmaster in Model 2 using cool pets. And even weak, smaller pets can, can have a usage due to their special attacks and abilities. Like I said, it, it all comes down to player skills and knowledge. Without performing correctly, just like when you're melee fighting or anything like that, you will be either be more effective or not. Tower shield. Oops. <clears throat> Do you want to see it here? Pretty epic. Pretty epic. Uh, the co combine mechanic is also on the upcoming roadmap. Uh, it's a small but powerful little feature. We say when it's an ammo 2 you have tried to make min maxing less a requirement. It seems like it to me. Yes, we did. Uh, that was one of the thing we were aiming for more in the first game already, but it was quite clear how it was played more with towards min maxing as a player. That that became the more the meta, right? And yes, this time around, as you can have seen in you know like crafting and such, we want to make sure that there's different tiers and steps, so you don't have to go a hundred, for instance in crafting 70 is enough to be master you can do as good weapon as a grandmaster but there's obviously different types of options you may get when going full out so yeah things like that for sure um and we're arranging the skills quite a bit as well to give more options so yeah for sure when i see um heavy shield this is one heavy m foe pretty cool pretty cool Severance, thank you very much for the prime. How did I do the summits made it in the ritual use pet points? Uh, so, I uh, hear something. I was thinking someone was sneaking up on me, but it's just a horse. So, we are still refining some of these um, uh, what you see and what is used by an undead horse. <clears throat> like I mentioned before, there's a difference between a living one and magically dead that you awake and it listens to you. Like it doesn't need to eat. Uh, stuff like that. The loyalty, etc. Uh, doesn't make sense the same way as a living creature, right? Um, so that is more being refined right now. So it make, you know gets clear also to the players. Uh, we're gonna get a training mode 
feature back when leveling up crafting professionals having to delete the items manually is such a weird thing uh, it's it's part of quality of life right i agree that there are room for quite a few of those so um yeah again there's, there's a lot of good feedback from from you guys that makes sense and help improve things uh that we plan to do whenever we have time in the upcoming roadmaps Want to drag a friend into a game, but he's afraid to lose himself to it. <laughs> An advice on persuasion. Uh, good question, good question. You know, if, if you're tired of the main theme park MMOs, that is one copy out of another one, and that's all you can find. I'm tired of that. Uh, I'm not looking for those type of MMOs. I want full freedom. I want to be able to use my brain and be rewarded when I do it. Uh, and of course, we need to attend to the, the issues and bugs we have. But other than that, I would, uh, this is the type of MMO game that I'm looking for. And I can't find anything on the market, which is quite insane. And obviously this is also why I'm making my favorite type of MMO. Uh, but yeah, adapt. And prepare that you will die and you will lose your items and that's fine because items is easily repre uh, replaced to get that proper mindset and not be too scared of dying and losing then you should be fine and if you want a real game experience in terms of having the opportunity to get an adrenaline rush getting your your heartbeat going up there's a stake on the line Again, can't find that in many other games. And that's something that I, I find exciting in a game. It, it gives more reasons and, you know, it makes sense. Why would I spend a lot of time in this if we, if we can't tap into all those reward triggers or excitement or feelings in both good and bad ways? I think that's a unique way or a unique thing I want to get from a game that I invest both time and money in. Um... But yeah, it may not be for everyone. We know we know that. But we saw that holy shit, it's it's for a lot of players since we started the comma beta and the stress test. So many casual players, so many coming from World of Warcraft and theme park games saying, Holy shit, this feels fresh and nice for once. And I'm looking forward to joining the game. So um yeah. We're here to stay and grow for many, many years. Why not start already, even if in its early phase, and even though it needs the polish and fixing currently. There it is. I'm so uh, intrigued. Show rising camp, but I don't know we riot. All right, here it is. Are you happy now? Are you happy? Brrr. Oh! Holy cow. It will whack me. It's really cool, really cool. It is cool, it is cool. Hello, little uh, spring buck. It's scared. <laughs> you never know, you're so used to people sneaking up on you and stuff, right? So uh, you always have that quick reaction when you think someone is attacking you. That's that's what you get in Mortal Online as well. Whoops. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool system. So when is the patch? It's it's soon. It's soon. We're getting there for sure. We're getting there. Polishing and balance face. Boo. And do you play a C character in game? I do. 
Windorn, I do. Night creatures are always cool. They are cool, actually. They are cool. I'm not sure we're gonna show them all, right? I mean, it's gonna be cool when you see them the first time in the real server racing and, and achieved by you guys, right? This is just a little sneak peek. We don't wanna show everything. And, uh, but yeah, pretty much everything can be racing again. No it on the patch, uh, as in we, we don't want to say a date. We want to make sure that we are done with what we are set up to do and we feel confident and ready. That's when we release it. Um, but yeah, again, we are close to that. We are in the polish and balancing state currently. So just racing them without any, like, like a sh let me show you here. So this this is the normal ritual table to race any of those, like a Camparon, for instance. So if you just place in a Camparon carcass here and a ritual candle, it will be racing as a dead Camparon, which is weak uh, and heavily damaged. So it won't be close to the living version at that stage. But if you start experimenting, adding some uh, powerful ingredients and modifiers here in those other slots, that's when you can start pushing the, the stats on it and make it more useful. So there's a lot of experimenting what, that you can do with them. You can try to get some bonuses from some creatures uh, into another one to affect its speed base or hit points or accessing certain attacks, stuff like that. So a lot of experimenting uh, to, you know, find what you may need. And like I said, a lot of more interesting use going to open up with Beast Mastery because, like I said, all of a sudden you may want to use a weak or quick Koger for a certain type of attack uh, or a wolf or something like that because you want to tap into one of those special abilities that is unique to that family, which is really cool. Um... Which ingredients? Anything you can find in the world or are new items? So, here up here is the main carcass. For instance, if you want to raise a camparon, this is where that slot goes. This is another carcass modifier. So, if you want to tap in a cobra here for, to get it, bring some speed abilities or such, you may put that here. Then, here goes different types of gems that affect the magical ritual to give it different types of uh, strength. And here goes artifacts. So if you find artifacts in the world or put together of artifacts, those will also give uh, effects to your creatures. Can we have the options of horizontal action bars, please? We are discussing that actually. That was a nice thing in the first game. Uh, so, so yeah, we're looking into that.
long should I be hoarding my shitty copper moments in my bank before deleting them? Are they gonna be used for anything else? How long are you uh, hoarding your crappy weapons? <laughs> yeah, I was uh, outside the window. That's that's why. But yeah, I think that's that's about it when it comes to sneak peeking the ritual part of necromancy. The next is up to you guys to figure out and play around with. You've seen uh, a few undead creatures now. Which club life would be having multiple access levels in houses? Yes, I agree. I agree. And it will come. Carcass have a freshness rate. No. Undead troll, that is doable. That is doable. You can do that. Yes, I've done a giveaway. Take can make a aquavit imon or sil for fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bandit. Good night, good night. And uh, happy midsummer. Next patch is soon. We don't have the exact date, but we're getting closer. And yes, ownership. Uh, dissemble and change ownership as in trade housing will come along with the house, house update quality of life patch. <clears throat> All right, guys, uh, it's getting a little bit late, um, and I think I've showed what I set up to show right now. It's midsummer tomorrow, got quite a few things to do. Uh, at work before um, before midsummer at the evening. <clears throat> Since how long you haven't read the forms? So I try to scan the forms every now and then. And, you know, Discord is becoming a new type of communication for most gamers out there. Um, and as of late, I have. 100% focused on the development and uh, setup of the team structure, new developers and so on. So it's a lot on the plate right now. And of course, we want to deliver this patch smoothly and stable as, as soon as we can. Uh, and then we have quite an exciting roadmap ahead with important milestones for the game moving forward. So, um, yeah. Shall we do a raid today, guys? Do we have anyone streaming that we should raid? Squirrely, Avira, Kralken, Vanaheim, Twisted Tap, Chappie, Atek. Do you have a vote, guys? Do you have a vote? Yes, there's coming a world bus in the Neko patch as well, and that's gonna be spectacular. Spectacular. Chance you do a duel. Let's let's do one whenever I'm online next time. Squilly, Etek, Squilly, Avira. What's a raid? So raid is if I'm passing all my viewers to someone else streaming Mortal Line. I usually do that after my stream to to uh, you know support our streamers that are awesome playing the game, showing the game, helping with awareness. That's it. So the question is what do you want to watch in game? We have um Squirly, the Knaves Master Fisherman. Uh 
Avira TV doing awesome adventures RPing Kralkan from Odin Seed doing crazy stuff <laughs> Vanaheim uh, Twisted App Chap Atic uh, Atic I've heard about Atic from Odin's also right been streaming quite a bit Twisted and Chappy I'm not sure if I know who they are should we do a vote? Should we do that? It's always hard to pick one. <laughs> what do you say? A vote. Uh. I just put on the Sony I did uh, okay so all right um, let's do a quick vote it's always impossible I I think I have rotated uh, the raid so now I, I have no memory when um, what the hell don't I have a where's the how the hell do I access the vote thing? Why the hell? Ah, okay. Let's do a quick, uh, quick one. And we have um, let's do it. Boom. Tell me some indeed. Happy midsummer. It's gonna be hot tomorrow, guys, in Sweden. 28 degrees where I am living and that is crazy hot to be Sweden today it was what 22 and that was hot so 28 is a whole new Bali Bali <laughs> their brothers are weak in PvP and difficult to use please buff them in next batch uh, it's 38 here today freaking hot that is crazy that is crazy that is crazy. That is a mythical sphere. Ignore that for now. Ignore that. There is. There is. So it looks like we want to take a look at Squarely, eh? I did forgot Atic, but yeah, it, that I don't know how to get more lines on the votes. I tried to rotate. Help the mages. Mage is gonna be in for a big treat with necromancy, as you can guess. All right, shall we uh, do a raid to Squilly then today? It was quite a while I raided him, so I guess it's time. Our Fisher Mastermind is a really nice guy. Uh, if you're interested in, in trying fishing, I highly suggest to visit him and he will teach you the pros, how to become a pro fisherman. Hey, tech, that, that is very kind of you. I tried to rotate, so, you know, sooner or later you're all going to get it. That's that's how it works. So, all right. Today, let's pass it on to... Um... No, fishing is a primary because there's a lot of value to be brought in fishing, as you can ask squarely about what you think. Um, there's, there's a lot of value, and there's going to be even more... Um, over time so yeah square where is he there he is all right guys thank you so much again for participating it means a lot to me and the team that you're here tuning in when i do streams 
and we plan to do them as much as we can as long as there's an interest in doing so um so so yeah thank you so much for tuning in asking your questions and thanks for all subs subscription donations and all of that um, it makes a huge difference for us as a small indie team i, I want to tell you that so thank you so much for the support and i hope to see you soon again so by the way i can announce already now that next week i won't be able to stream uh, maybe there will be something else uh, going on we have to check but i don't think i will be able to stream next next week but after that one again i should be back so yeah we're working very hard on necro patch it will be here soon we're getting closer and closer we're very excited to see how you experience all of that because there's so much more it's not only a magic school there's a whole new type of experience that you're gonna figure out also so that's gonna be cool all right guys again thank you very much and have a good night and happy midsummer and uh, here we go squarely doing a raid uh all right here goes bye bye good night